Welcome to Electron Online. We've now done a one-dimensional problem, a two-dimensional problem, and here is our three-dimensional problem, which mimics, of course, the general case where the forces involved can point in any direction, x, y, and z. So that makes the problem a little bit more difficult, but if we use the right methodology, it shouldn't be that difficult. All right. So let's find the x, y, and z components of each of the three forces. Notice that F1 only exists in the x, z plane, F2 only exists in the x, y plane, and then of course F3 exists both in the x, y, and z plane, so F3 will have three components. Also notice we'll have to find the direction cosines in order to find the x, y, and z components of F3. Let's start with the easier one. All right, first of all, we're going, and I might as well draw them out. So let's use blue. So we're going to get the x component of F1. So that would be F1x. And we're going to have the z component, like so. That would be F1z. Here we'll have the x component. That would be F2x. And the y component, this would be F2y. And of course, here we have the x, y, and z component. We'll get that in just a moment. I might as well go ahead and draw that in. So we have the, um, the x component would be right here, that would be the F3x. The z component would be right here, that would be the F3z. And the y component would be this one right here, that would be the F3y. Notice F3y would be negative, F3z is positive, F3x is also positive. All right, let's go find the components now. F1x, so we can say that F1 would be equal to F1x, I might as well make it in the vector quantity, that would be the cosine of 30 degrees, which is 0.866 times 100, that would be 86.6 newtons in the x direction, and a minus 50 newtons in the z direction. Minus because the sine of, the cosine of 60, or I'll take that back here, to find the z component, that would be the sine of 30 degrees, which is uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 100 is 50 newtons, so that's how we get the two components there. Over here we have a 30 and 60 degree angle as well. So to find F2, F2 is equal to, now the x component will be the cosine of 60, which is 0 0.5 times 200, that would be 100 newtons in the x direction, and that would be plus, now notice, here we have the sine of 60, which is 0.866 times 200. Might as well get a calculator there. So we have to uh, make it 60, take the sine times 200, and that gives us 173.2. So it would be plus 173.2 newtons in the y direction. All right, so those are the components for force 1 and force 2. Now to find the components of force 3, we need to the um, direction cosines, which means we need the equivalent length of the three dimensions. And so we can say that L is equal to the square root of, we have three meters right here, so it would be three squared, plus we have one meter, that's one squared, plus five meters, which is five squared, which is equal to the square root of 25, 26, that would be 35. And let's see what that is equal to. Take 35, take the square root, that would be 5.916. 5.916 is the length, so now we can find the direction cosines. So alpha would be the direction cosine in the x direction, which would be the x component, which is 5, divided by the length, 5.916. So 5 divided by 5.916, that would be equal to 0 0.845. 0 0.845, so that's the direction cosine for the x direction. The direction cosine for the y direction, alpha beta, is equal to, uh, the y direction would be 3 divided by 5.916. So 3 divided by 5.916 equals 0 0.507, 0 0.507, alpha beta gamma, so the Direction cosine in the z direction, that would be the ratio of the length in the z direction divided by the total length, which is 5.916. And so 1 divided by 5.916 equals 0 0.169, 0 0.169. So now that we have the three direction cosines, we can say that F 
sub 3 is equal to 300 newtons times the direction cos in the x direction and of course might as well give it the vector plus 300 newtons times the direction cos in the y direction plus and notice let's make sure we get the signs correct x direction is positive y direction is negative so we might as well put a negative in here so minus and that would be positive in the z direction which would be 300 newtons times the direction cosine in the z direction like so and so f sub 3 is equal to 300 times 0.845 that gives us 253.5 253.5 newtons in the i direction 300 times 0.507 that gives us minus 152.1 newtons in the j direction and 300 times 1 point oop try it again 300 times 0.169 and we get 50 that would be plus 50.7 newtons in the k direction so now we have all the components of the three vectors which now allows us to get the resultant vector so the resultant vector will simply be equal to the sum of the x components sum of the y components sum of the z components so for the x components that's this one this one and this one looks like they're all positive so it'd be 86.6 plus 100 and plus 2 253.5 that gives us 440.1 newtons in the x direction all right let me use a different color to indicate the y components so we have a y component here and we have a y component here that's positive that's negative all right so we have 173.2 minus 152.1 and that gives us 21.1 so it would be plus 21.1 newtons in the y direction and finally the z direction notice we have one component here i'll use the dashed line one component there they're almost equal and opposite sign but not quite this is slightly bigger so it would be plus 0 0.7 newtons in the k direction so now we have the equivalent force representing the sum of the three forces and let's say that force is acting at point a all right so we have 440 in the x direction 21 in the y direction and 0.7 oh that would be was that a minus or was it a plus looks like they're all plus aren't they plus 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 all right they're all in the positive direction and yes they were okay so 440 in the x direction 21 in the, in the 21 in the y direction and then 0.7 in the z direction so it's kind of like this uh, that might be, not be a good representation. I'm going to do it like this. All right. So that's hard to draw. But we have a positive x direction. We have a positive y direction. So let's see here. Positive y direction and a positive z direction. It's a little bit in the z direction, a little bit in the y direction. All right. Okay, so there's my resultant vector r. Now I will have a moment as well caused by all these forces so how do we find the resultant moment now that's a little bit more complicated but again following the rules it shouldn't be that difficult okay let's take it one at a time we're going to calculate the moment caused by force number one so I'm going to call it moment about a caused by force number one it's going to be a vector so that is equal to the cross product of the position vector to the location where force one is acting multiplied times force one all right so that means we need this vector right here there's our r vector this is our r one vector and so that would be equal to the cross product of i j and k the components of the position vector so in the x direction it would be two meters in the y direction well it's in the xz plane so the component for that vector is zero and for the z direction we have a negative four meters because it's yeah it's in the negative four meters so minus four 
The components of F1, we have those right here. We have an X component. The X component was 86.6. The Y component was 0. And the Z component was a minus 50. All right. So this allows us to find the moment caused by the first force. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Notice because we have zeros here, that means that the I component is zero, the K component is zero, but the J component survives. So we have a minus J times the product of those two, which would be minus 100, minus the product of those two, but since there's a minus there, that makes it into a positive 4 times 86.6. So 4 times 86.6, that would be plus 360, oh, 346.4 units, of course, would be Newton meters. And we multiply this times this, we get a positive value. Oh, no, I'm sorry, take that back. We first have to add. So let's go ahead and add. So we have minus 100 and then times the minus. So it does become a minus 246.4 Newton meters in the j direction so that would be the moment caused by force one now of course we have to do the same for force two we have to do the same for force three and then we have to add it all together so let's set it up so the moment about point a for force two is going to be equal to the position vector to force two multiply it times force two so that's going to be the cross product i j and k the components to where force 2 is acting. Notice it's acting down there. So the x component for that would be the distance 2. The y component, uh, it's down 3 units from where a is, so that's minus 3. And then in the z direction, that it would be 0. So those are the x, y, z component of the position vector from there to there. Let me go ahead and draw that. That's r2 right there, r2. And now we put the x, y, and z components of F2. Well, it does have an x component of a positive 100. It has a y component of a positive 173.2. But it has no z component. So that would be 0 right there. Notice, since that is 0, there will not be an i component. There will not be a j component, but there will be a k component. So it would be, this is equal to the k component times the product of those two, which is 2 times 173.2, like that, minus the product of those components, because you have a negative 3 there, that will come positive, 100 times the negative 3. So that becomes 2 times 173.2 uh, plus 300. That gives us a positive 646.4 in the... Oh, Newton meters, can't forget the units, in the k direction. So that would be the moment caused by the second force. And then, of course, we're going to have to do that again for the third force, but since I'm out of board space, I'll just go ahead and stop right here, but then realize that the total moment about point A, the resultant moment, will simply be the, the vector sum of the moment caused by force 1, about point A, plus the moment caused by force 2, plus the moment caused by force 3. So we have to do this one more time using the position vector from there to there. So that would be the position vector R3. And so we have to account for the X, the Y, and the Z components. So the position vector will have all three components. And then the F3 will also have three components. So we'll have to do a bona fide uh, vector product, a, a vector product, and you'll have an X, a Y, and a Z component. You add them all together, they'll give us a total moment about point A. And so what we've done now is we replaced a sum of three vectors by a single resultant force. And when we add up all the individual components of the moment by each of the three vectors, we also will get the resultant moment. And so that's how we replace the um, system of three forces by a single force and a single moment. And that's how it's done.